Machines aren't naturally funny, but they might need to be if they want to sell us stuff. From American Public Media, this is Marketplace Tech demystifying the digital economy. I'm Molly Wood. Chatbots and automated assistants are entertaining our kids, telling us the weather and sports scores, providing customer service, helping us shop for things, and dishing out news and information. But those b- or a sale if they can't keep up with the conversation. That means they need to be nimble and sometimes even funny. So to make their chatbots more witty, tech companies are hiring improv comedians. From New York, Marketplace tech producer Stephanie Hughes has more. There's this concept in improv, it's called yes and. It's basically saying yes to the reality your scene partner creates. Alex French says it's one of the first things he teaches students at the Upright Citizens Brigade in New York. Great, let's do this. Let's just do three warm-up scenes. I would say the only goal should be establishing the who, what, where, and like getting into an improv mindset. Agreeing on that who, what, where, that's what yes and means. French gives the performers a cue. Um, and your suggestion is barrel. And the performers run with it. Come on, you can work harder than that. Your wedding's in a month. Ugh. I mean, like, my arms are gonna get thinner from this? Celine, that's a 45-pound barrel. How could your arms not get thinner from this? This idea of yes and is also useful in French's work on chatbots. His ability to be clever quickly, it got him a job writing responses for a bot called Poncho, who was a genderless cat. We had some general ideas about the cat, including that Poncho was like very lazy and Poncho was a hipster or a wannabe hipster. So Poncho, which is no longer active, liked pizza and lived in a loft in Brooklyn. It was a pretty simple chatbot. French, with a group of writers, scripted what Poncho would say in response to certain trigger words. Like maybe we have it said that anytime someone mentions pizza, they're going to get this specific response pizza in all caps with like an emoji with a tongue sticking out. But chatbots are becoming more sophisticated. Think Google Assistant, Alexa, Siri, and they need to be able to converse in a way that keeps you talking. So if you say pizza to one of them, the bot needs to be able to say, yes, pizza. And do you want to make one or order one? Comedians are helping tech companies with that too. Elena Skopetos also performs with the Upright Citizens Brigade. Her day job is helping the Google Voice Assistant decide how to react in certain situations. The user says something like, I'm sad, versus something like, can you fart? Like, we can intuit what the intentions are there. Scopetos and her team write answers to these kinds of prompts. So for I am sad, I think one of the answers we have is something like, I wish I had arms so I could give you a hug, but for now maybe a joke or some music might help. As for can you fart, the assistant does take the opportunity to make a joke. Sure, I'll take the fall for this one, and I'll fart again to clear all doubts. These scripted lines are the first steps in developing the bot's responses, so that it's funny, but still G-rated. Kathy Pearl works in conversation design at Google. She says the next step is to get even more detailed. Where we might actually draw out a flow. Like, okay, at this point, they could either say this, or they could say that. And you start drawing, you know, the pathways that the person could take through this experience. Sort of like choose your own adventure, but for a conversation with a bot. But there's a challenge. Companies want these machines to have a sense of humor and to be really nice. Part of Alexa's character is that she never tells a joke that will intentionally marginalize a group of people. Amy Jimenez Marquez is part of the team behind Alexa, Amazon's virtual assistant. By the way, she also performs improv. She says part of her job is being able to sidestep prompts from users like, tell me a fat joke. We answer it with jokes about margarine or butter or shortening or avocados. <laughs> so, so we kind of try to diffuse it. Because when you're a bot representing a giant retail company, the last thing you want to do is make fun of any of your customers. That's Marketplace tech producer Stephanie Hughes. Tech companies have also hired movie screenwriters and brand marketing experts to try to make sure their bots strike the right tone. And now for some related links. First, let's get a sense of the stakes here. Juniper Research estimates that by the year 2023, retail sales through chatbots will reach $112 billion. That could be online chatbots or using voice ordering on an Echo or Google device. Increasingly, companies are trying to define the difference between these consumer-oriented chatbots 
and the ones they'll need to build to conduct actual business, like helping customers place orders or get tech support. There's an interesting piece on all that at sociable.co. You'll find that link on our website, marketplacetech.org. And when it comes to your branded bot, some companies have learned the hard way that tone matters and sometimes funny is not funny at all. I found a story about a financial services chatbot called Clio that around Valentine's Day earlier this year, tried to give customers tough love about their finances by going into something called savage mode. It got a little too savage and it got accused of making rape jokes, which, you know, I mean, people like personality and their digital assistants, but much as with real people, you gotta know where the line is. I'm Molly Wood and that's Marketplace Tech. This is APM. This Marketplace podcast is supported by Evan.